Your Honor, the State of South Carolina versus uh, Larry Prince, indictment number 2022-GS-43-56. Mr. Prince is before the court on a true bill indictment. The pertinent allegations are strong armed robbery, also known as common law robbery, and assault and battery of a high and aggravated nature. Uh, Mr. Prince is before the court with his attorney Michael Routzong, Jason Corbett on behalf of the state. Uh, Your Honor, it's my understanding Mr. Prince wishes to tender a plea of guilty to strong arm robbery and assault and battery of a high and aggravated nature, um, that being um, what is known as an 85% offense. Sir, so raise your right hand. State your name. Yeah, yeah. Right. Be silent as well. Affirm your testimony. The court shall be the truth. Yes. Sir. truth and nothing but the truth. Yes. Sir. Okay, Mr. Prince, I'm Judge Curtis. Sorry, I understand that you're here today to plead guilty to assault and battery of a high and aggravated nature that carries up to 20 years and to strong armed robbery, which carries up to 15 years. Is that your understanding, sir? Yes, ma'am. And you've had a chance to discuss your decision to enter this plea today with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. You, you've talked about this with your lawyer? Yes, ma'am. And has he answered all of your questions for you? Yes, ma'am. And are you satisfied with what Mr. Routes on has done for you? Yes, ma'am. And so you're not under the influence today of any drugs or alcohol? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything to try to get you to plead guilty? No, ma'am. Has anyone forced you, threatened you, coerced you in any way? No, ma'am. Okay, it looks like this is a true bill and document. Um, you're waiving some important constitutional rights when you enter this plea today. You have a constitutional right to remain silent. If your case went to trial, nobody could force you to testify. If you chose not to testify, nobody can hold that against you, not the judge and not the jury. The presiding judge would, in fact, instruct the jury that they can't even discuss your decision not to testify during their deliberations. Shouldn't be a factor at all. But when you plead guilty, you're waiving that right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. You have the constitutional right to a trial by jury let 12 citizens hear the evidence against you and let them decide whether you're guilty or not guilty. You waive that right today when you enter this guilty plea. And you understand that? Yes, ma'am. In a trial, the state bears the burden of proving you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And all 12 jurors have to agree that you're guilty before you can be convicted. You waive those rights today. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. In addition, when you have a trial, you get the chance to confront the state's witnesses. They sit right here in this witness stand, you get to watch their testimony, and then Mr. Rotson gets to ask them questions on cross-examination. He can present a defense on your behalf. He would be able to subpoena your witnesses and compel your witnesses to come to court. Again, you waive those rights today, and you understand that. Yes, the assault and battery behind an aggravated nature is considered a violent offense under our code of laws. Um, that means that it's going to affect the percentage of time that you serve at SEBC. Um, the offense is also considered a serious offense. That means it counts as a strike for purposes of our three strikes laws. I don't know what you have in your criminal history if you already have any strikes against you. Um, but once you get three strikes, then the state can seek a term of imprisonment for life without the possibility of parole. And you understand that? You've discussed that back with Mr. Routzong. Okay. Um, Mr. Prince, knowing all of your rights, are you pleading guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Okay, I'm going to hear the facts from the state and then I'll have some more questions for you. Thank you, Your Honor. This incident took place on or about March 8th of 2021 here in Sumters County, uh, specifically um, over in the area of the, what I would call the area of the Boulevard Road. On the date in question, this was approximately 9 o'clock in the morning, Mr. Oxendine uh, was at that location and he was working on some washing machines. That was his business. That's what he, he did for to earn a living. Um, uh, two individuals came up and spoke with him for a little bit. Uh, if I remember the facts exactly correctly, I believe they then left for a little bit, came back, spoke with him. He turned his back to work on a machine and they assaulted him. Um, at some point in time, he briefly lost conscious, consciousness. Um, once he came to, he was able to sort of get himself back to his vehicle. Fortunately, a co-worker um, arrived shortly thereafter and was able to summon the police and the ambulance. Taken from his person uh, was $1,020. 
Judge, the injuries included multiple broken ribs, a punctured lung, an injured clavicle, and then after he got to the hospital, he then developed a bank brain bleed as a result of the assault that took place, which uh, left him in a recovery uh, rehab center for a number of months. Um, the defendants were identified on no less than four video cameras at different locations in the vicinity. Uh, the defendants subsequently, during interviews, officers had them identify themselves in the video without using all of the videos from the multiple angles. And then subsequently, the co-defendant, Darren Prince, gave a statement to authorities uh, implicating himself and the defendant for you, Larry Prince, in the crime, uh, putting more of it on, Mr., uh, on Larry Prince, the defendant, before you. Um, Judge, we do have a sentence record. I'm sorry. Okay, let me ask you, Mr. Prince, are those facts true? Now, listen, I'm pretty guilty anyway. Wait, one thing I want to say, right? Hey, can y'all go ahead and free my brother? Let me my brother go back home then. I don't mind from the charge. I'm not guilty anyway. Please, but let my brother go home. The question that I have is are you guilty of this? Yeah, these I two am. offenses? Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Yes. Rotson, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yes, yes. I'm guilty. Yeah. Um, can you understand this does not mean that the charges against your brother are going to be dismissed? You understand that? Um, okay, I do find that there is a sufficient factual basis for me to accept the plea, sir. And I find that you're entering the plea today freely and voluntarily, understanding your rights, and with the advice of Mr. Ratson, a very confident lawyer. Sir, you've got 10 days from today's date if you wanted to appeal. That 10 days is a hard and fast deadline. Okay, so um, that's got to be in writing to this court. Mr. Ratson, sir, I'm glad you're clean. Your Honor, my understanding is the state is recommending 11 years concurrent on both of these charges. Is that correct, sir? That is correct, Your Honor. It is a recommendation of 11 years. And we believe that's a just resolution that we have agreement with the state. We'd ask the court to consider um, accepting that recommendation. Um, a couple questions. How long has he been in jail? Judge, he has been, he's been in jail since March 11th of 21. 361 days, Your Honor. Um, can you tell me about his criminal record? And Judge, if I may, um, I believe Ms. Oxendine, the wife of the victim, is joining us. Um, uh, we believe that the recommendation falls well within the range permitted by statute. Uh, but if the court needed any information as to the injury, um, she could certainly provide that. Ms. Oxendine, I can see that you're with us, ma'am. Um, I'm going to unmute you if you would like to say anything. I'm sorry, you're, you're kind of fading in and out, Mr. Oxendine. Okay, maybe they will be able to get a better signal before we are done. Um, Mr. Corbett, you've located the criminal history? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. Um, back from 1997, a burglary, second degree. Also, at the same time, bringing a grand larceny. And it appears that there was also an assault and battery in the second degree. And... Judge, it looks like there may have been a burglary conviction in Berkeley County as well. And that, those were all from 1997? <coughs> Judge, the Berkeley County matter looks to be a 2019 matter. Okay. Um, I'm not able to get the odds and dines back up. It's Judge, may, may I be allowed to call Ms. Oxendine and place her on speaker for the court? Sure.
that's like, Ms. Oxendine, I'm going to put you on the speakerphone, and as soon as I do, everyone in the courtroom will be able to hear you, okay? All right, wait about just a couple seconds, please. Okay, yes, ma'am. This is Judge Curtis. Hello. Yes, you can hear me? I sure can. Okay. Um, first, you just want to speak. Sure. Okay. How are you, Judge? I'm doing fine. And tell me your name, sir. Okay. Can y'all hear over there? Okay, yes, sir. I'm glad to hear from you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Oxendine, I'm glad to hear anything that you want to tell me, sir. Yes, sir. You're still having some back problems? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. Mrs. Oxendine, is there anything that you want the court to know? You can follow us on Christian News TY Facebook. You can follow us on YouTube. And you can follow us on our website. Your Honor, may it please the court. Uh, before you is Aaron Robinson. Your Honor, this is um, indictment 2021 GS43762, which we voted indictment for harassment in the first degree. Your Honor, the defense here to plead guilty to that charge. Your Honor, a guilty plea. On this offense will trigger a probation violation. Your Honor will note that probation is already standing up. I'm not sure if they've already started the paperwork or if they will need to upon the acceptance of the guilty plea. Um, but Your Honor, the state is recommending a two year prison sentence on this. He has been in since April 3rd, 2021, um, which I'm sure Mr. Barnes will give a more in depth um, date calculation to that. But he's been in since April 3rd, 2021, We're recommending two years in Department of Corrections. So, raise your right hand, state your name. Aaron Shimon Robinson. Do you sign the swear from your testimony in court? Shall I be the truth? Go ahead and just address Mr. Tisdale. Um, Your Honor, has he been served with a violation? Oh, no, ma'am. We were waiting until um, he actually pled guilty to a new offense. Uh, we were going to serve a citation. Um, we were ready to go forward. And y'all want me to do this all together? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Robinson, I understand that you're here today to plead guilty to harassment in the first degree, which carries up to three years. Is that your understanding? Yes, Your Honor. Have you had a chance to discuss this with Mr. Barnes? Yes, ma'am. Are you satisfied with what your attorney's done for you? Yes, ma'am. You're not under the influence today of any drugs or alcohol? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything to try to get you to plead guilty? No, ma'am. Has anybody forced you, threatened you, coerced you in any way? No, ma'am. Um, 
you understand that this is also going to serve as a violation of your current probation? Yes, and you want me to go ahead and deal with that probation violation today as well? Yes, um, you are waiving some important rights today when you enter this plea. You've got a constitutional right to remain silent. If your case went to trial, that means nobody can force you to testify. If you chose not to testify, nobody can hold that against you, not the judge and not the jury. But when you plead guilty, you're waiving that constitutional right. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. You have the constitutional right to a trial by jury. To let 12 citizens hear the evidence against you and let them decide whether you're guilty or not guilty. Of course, when you plead guilty, you waive that right to a jury trial. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. In a trial, the state always has the burden of proving you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And all 12 of the jurors have to agree that you're guilty before you can be convicted. You're waiving those rights today. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. In a trial, you would also get the chance to confront the state's witnesses. They would testify in open court. Mr. Barnes would get to ask them questions on cross-examination. And then you would get the chance to present a defense on your behalf and subpoena your witnesses to come to court and testify. Again, you waive those rights today. Knowing all of your rights, um, Mr. Robinson, are you pleading guilty or not guilty to the harassment first-degree charge? I'm pleading guilty. Okay, I'm going to give the facts to Mr. Brown, and then we'll talk about the probation matter as well. Your Honor, may it please the court. Uh, Your Honor, uh, this happened at uh, 330 North Main Street, uh, which is uh, downtown uh, of the laundry and cleaner location. Uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Capsati, who had uh, purchased the business a couple of years prior, um, he uh, informed law enforcement that he had uh, more than one run-in with Mr. Aaron Robinson. It began originally a couple of, about a week or so prior um, in late March of 2021. Uh, when Mr. Robinson was cutting through the property, Mr. Capsati said, you your girl come on our property, just bring some clothes and bring some business. At which point, Mr. Robinson started yelling that he was going to shoot him. Um, law enforcement uh, actually spoke with Ms. Fuel, who works at that location. She also informed him that she heard him say that. Uh, Your Honor, um, these ongoing incidents uh, escalated to a point that Mr. Robinson, um, he had been coming around and Mr. Capsati began um, carrying a gun with him to work. He was concerned about it. On April 2nd, while he was um, at the location, um, he opened up one of the back garage doors to drain one of the boilers, um, uh, which they were used for dry cleaning, at which point Mr. Robinson walked up on him, um, surprised him, and told him that I'll fucking get you, um, at which point Mr. Capsati ultimately drew his firearm, uh, a Glock 43 9mm, and told him to stay back to get off his property. This was all in video surveillance. Law enforcement arrived on scene. Um, and, and they ultimately arrested Mr. Robinson because of the repeated behavior um, causing these concerns that does rise to the level of harassment first degree. And that's what the state is relying on. Are those facts true, Mr. Robinson? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, do you find that there is a sufficient factual basis for me to accept your plea on this charge? And I find that you're entering the plea today freely and voluntarily, understanding your rights and with the advice of Mr. Barnes, very competent attorney. Sir, you've got 10 days from today's date if you wanted to appeal the conviction. You want me to hear from probation first and then I'll hear from you, Mr. Wright. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Sisto? Um, well, I'll start the citation and I'll give you some of the background information on Mr. Um, Mr. Robinson. The state is fucking out of kind of something. The person that appeared before me, Marty Stisdale, who first been doing this warrant as well to that area of Robinson. Then we did this kind of state on the 17th day of March 2022, violated certain conditions of release in the following particulars. Violation of probation pursuant to the indictment number 20-GS-43-0768. The finding states that there is probable cause to believe the defendant, Aaron Robinson, committed the violation set forth, and that such probable cause is based on the following facts. But I pleaded guilty under the indictment number 21-GS-43-762. Your Honor, please the court. Mr. Um, Mr. Robinson is actually on probation here in Suffolk County uh, for the offense of burglary, third degree, um, first offense. He was sentenced on September 8, 2020 before Judge um, Cooper. At that time, Judge Cooper sentenced him to two years to spend with 18 years of probation. Um, Mr. Robinson. I'm sorry. Two years. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long time. <laughs> uh, Mr. Robinson has um, previously had a, um, a 
a violation prior to um, prior to this one. Um, he's already had a, a hundred. He's already going to revoke 120 days um, off that original sentence, Your Honor, which was on October 15, 2021, before Judge McIntosh. Um, he hadn't been released from jail since that revocation. He's been being held on this, this new offense here. Um, as Mr. Brown stated before, this will violate his probation. He still has about 18 months left on this sentence that he can serve. Okay, Mr. Barnes. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Robinson actually was <clears throat> in jail a good little bit before he was revoked. The last time he actually went to SEDC and did basically a turnaround for the, I forget what Agent Tisdale said, Judge McIntosh revoked him 120 days, I think. Um, but because he'd been in jail for so long at that point, he basically, I think he went to SEDC for like 24 hours. Um, came back and he's now been in, um, but the uh, detention center for 142 days. Um, Your Honor, uh, I'll be honest with you, um, Ms. Robinson does have some mental health issues. Um, he's aware of that, and we have talked about his need when he comes back from the Department of Corrections to um, find himself some treatment and to get himself straightened out so that Small things don't act as triggers for his anger. And um, because he's a very bright guy, he's very capable, um, but it's hard for him to hold down a job and a place to live and those sorts of things when his mind's all over the place. So I firmly believe that if he can get himself some mental health treatment, get himself a place to live, he can get a stable job and be productive, um, it, they start as small things and sort of escalate because it's just hard for him to keep himself in check. I just want you to have a little bit of context for how we got to where we are now. Um, having said all that, um, Mr. Brown has, um, has offered the two years. I had several long discussions with Agent Kringle, who is his probation agent, and she thinks that um, a two-year revocation and terminate is probably just the best thing. Get all of this done, let him go to SCDC, everything will be finished, and then he can hopefully come get out and go wherever he's gonna go with the understanding that he needs to get himself some treatment, get his life together so that he can start being productive, because I know he can be. Mr. Robinson, do you have some family in Sumter? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm going to go along with the recommendation of two years. I am giving him credit for 142 days in Sumter County Jail. Thank you, Your Honor. I am making this concurrent with um, probation revocation. And what I would say is let's just terminate after he does his, um, I guess I can revoke the 18 months and just do it concurrent because then it will terminate anyway, right? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. So I'm going to put on here concurrent with 18 month probation revocation. And do you have a case number in that one that I can put on here? Um, it would be 20 GS 43 0768. That covers everything we need to cover. Thank you, Robert. Okay, good luck to you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Robert.